previously on MasterChef. Thousands lined up from around America for the chance to compete. I'm going to be the next Master Chef. I am the next Master Chef. Master Chef, here I come. 100 were chosen to present their signature dishes to the Master Chef judges. Gordon Ramsay ate sushi off of me. <laughs> Some tasted success. All right, yes. Others went down in flames. I'm willing to learn. Sorry, it's a no. But the judges came to one conclusion. We've given out quite a few aprons, and we don't do that lightly. The standard is there. Tonight, even more home cooks step up to the plate. Prepare to be taken down by your mama. In a bid to win an apron. I have to fight. And take their first step on the road to becoming America's next Master Chef. It's the beginning of day two, and the judges are hungry for perfect dishes. Anticipation is in the air as the first batch of home cooks create the dishes that could change their lives forever. First up, a pool boy is about to dive in and put his own twist on a British classic. So I'm doing an English style sausage roll with an Italian twist on it. My name's Dustin. I live in Orlando, Florida, and I'm a pool technician. I really like my job. It's really, you know, mellow, laid back, you know, do what I want to do, really. Cooking's always been one of my passions. I love cooking Italian food. I have the Italian background. You got going here, son. My mom introduced me to cooking. And now she got diagnosed with breast cancer. So everything my mom's been through, I mean, really, it's, you know, she's just really, like, I look up to her. I mean, she's been through a lot. And she raised four boys, counting my dad, you know? So and she's a strong Italian woman. But she's the one who brought me into the kitchen. So I would love to win Master Chef for her. What Dustin doesn't know is his mom has secretly flown in from Florida to support him. <laughs> and right now she's going through some tough times with you know breast cancer and stuff. And you know it's just amazing that she just found time to fly out here, you know, just just for her baby boy, you know. I was so excited that I could be out here to do this. I was so excited. After their one hour in the prep kitchen, each home cook is then given five minutes to complete their dish in front of the judges. If two judges think a home cook has what it takes, they'll be awarded a Master Chef apron and move on to the next round of the competition. How you guys doing? How are you? Good. First name is? My name's Dustin. Good. What are you cooking? So I'm doing a traditional English style sausage roll with an Italian twist on it. Well, hold on a minute. Sausage roll? Yeah, a sausage Here. roll. Yeah. Well, I figure, I figure English Italian try to, you know, kill two birds with one stone. I'm Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> I love sausage rolls. Look when... how excited this guy is. I love them. What's your twist? Well, instead of using the, the banger sausage, I used a uh, spicy Italian sausage. And then I also made a little uh, creamy marinara to go on the plate, kind of spicy and sweet. In England, it comes in a paper bag, a sausage roll. Look at you. What have you wrapped it in? Uh, it's actually just puff pastry. I just hope you guys like it. Listen to that noise. Would yeah. this be like a main course or if a it's hot right, dog? Or, I mean, if what it's you... hot dog, don't insult a <laughs> sausage roll. <laughs> hot dog, no. Look at that thing. What's that <laughs> now? A Parmesan cheese. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. little, uh, What's that now? What's the little, second? A little parsley. Trust me, look at and me. Wait, I'm not, I'm not no, done, no, Gordon. Uh -oh. I'm not what, done, What's Gordon. that? A little basil pesto just for show. Just for show. You're putting pesto on a sausage roll? <laughs> not on it. Around it. I've got to go first. You I'm sorry. Go do first. it, please. The sauce, what's in there? Uh, it's just a marinara cream, a little bit of garlic, pepper. Oh, chef, how about some for the rest of us? <laughs> oh. Stop him. <laughs> that was delicious. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amazing. Sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. Do you, you got any left over here? So many end pieces? <laughs> All right. It really is yummy. I'm, Thank I'm psyched. You. Thank you very much.
Now, if I didn't know any better, I would accuse you of pandering to the judge, but obviously it worked, so uh, you're playing to his childhood memory. I was trying to Can I eat this with my hands? Is this how you want Eat it however you want to eat it. <laughs> I don't know. I never even heard of a sausage roll until about five minutes ago, so. It goes hand in glove. Pint of beer, sausage <laughs> roll. <laughs> yes or no? Uh, yes. Graham, yes or no? Yes. Come here, hey, big boy. You got it. <laughs> that was delicious. Thank really you. good indeed. Thank you very uh, much. Well done. So the very first home cook of the day wins an apron. A sausage roll. Jeez, I feel full now. Make it happen! But can the next in line roll through just as easy? I'm making a honey apple smoked risotto with an egg yolk. I'm slightly worried the fact it's not even moving. It's lacking flavor. Oh! Uh, I think we got a fumble here. It's a no. 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 We went all over the country, and you're one of the 100 people that made it to California. <laughs> Whoa. Next, does a single mom from Sopchoppy, Florida, have the stomach for this competition? The wine is for my nerves. It's my secret weapon. My name is Christine Corley. I live in Florida, and I'm a single mom. <laughs> Most people don't want to go home and cook, but that's all I really want to do. It's like a stress reliever. My dad's a great cook. This is my dad who's cleaning a squirrel. So for all the redneck cooking, I'll go to my dad for advice. But my style of cooking is modern. Winning would mean knowing that I could provide a great future for me and my son. I think I have what it takes to be the next master chef. Hey, <laughs> I had to have a drink on the way here, so. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Christine. Great, what are you cooking? I'm cooking soft shell crab. Nice. Creamy polenta and some coleslaw. Okay. I'm a little fruitcake, so. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Sop Choppy. I am a single mom recently. Okay, sorry to hear that. That's all right, he was a They always are. They always are, that's right. Aw, oh, man, no, you don't get that one. You get this one. Let us know when you're ready I'm for ready. us to taste. Let's go. Okay, Christine, I'm first. Polenta is instant? No, sir. Steal the claw, don't tell him I, I did that. Oh, that boy. Mm -hmm. Put that claw back down. Christine. Yes, sir. Love the confidence. Thanks. What kind of food did you grow up with? Crap. Crap as in like Oh. Right. Well, I grew up very poor, so it's like fried chicken and SOS, which is on shingles. It's like uh, toast, and then we put ground beef, and then we put some white gravy on it. <laughs> Uh, Joe, yes or no? I think that everything together on that plate might make a good sandwich, but um, as a master chef dish, I'm gonna have to say no. Uh, Graham, yes or no? <clears throat> I think there are a few things in the world that are as sensuous as a soft shell crab. And I thought you did it justice. And I love the slaw too. I'm not a fan of the polenta, but I'm giving a yes. Um, soft shell crab, polenta, definitely not. Doesn't work at all. You seem to have a, a connection with food. Yeah. And you were sort of almost dealt <laughs> a dysfunctional card growing up on the crab that you just explained that you ate. I love the slaw. Thank you. But I think what you've done to the soft shell crab, um, <laughs> Let us know when you're ready I'm for ready. us to taste. Let's 
go. So far, Christine, a single mom from Florida, got a no from Joe and a yes from Graham. Her fate now lies in Gordon's hands. I love the slaw. Thank you. But I think what you've done to the soft shell crab, um, was phenomenal. Congratulations. For me, it's a yes. Put this on with pride. <laughs> and get out there. Well done. Good job. I just wanted to make everybody proud. I knew something would happen one day. I just needed a break. <laughs> While Christine toasts her victory, the next home cook is ready to celebrate before he's even begun. How are you? Ready. <laughs> Ready, you're not. Crazy you are. A little bit. What are you cooking for us today? Uh, today I have a bacon strawberry with a garlic horseradish lebony and a orange blueberry vodka reduction. Uh, what were you smoking when you put that dish together? Joe, would you like to go first? Sure. It's kind of like bacon bits. Look at that. Come on. Sadly, the dish leaves me filled with dread. You're not only outside the box, you're on the <laughs> moon. Oh, no. Definitely not. Thank you. <laughs> Jason's chance to impress the judges didn't quite end with the bang he'd hoped for. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Can this next group of home cooks do any better? Je de Bruxelles uh, avec, uh, uh, je, je l'ai sauté dans le, le... Why are you speaking French when you're not even French? I know that you speak French, and just to say hello. I cooked to you white chocolate brownie surprise today. I'm just going to try these and make sure they're good. Next. I'm not even going to eat this because I think it's conceptually wrong, it's executed poorly, it smells bad. What have you done to the cod? I baked it. For how long? Three weeks? It sat there and just went to It's sitting there. Yeah, it's like you on it. Yeah. Disgusting. This is something that people like me to make. Are they still alive? You did them two ways. We hate it three ways. No, 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 no. Thank you. The day's already half over. But so far, only two home cooks have earned aprons. Joe turns up the heat. This dish that you present, it's a reflection of what you think of us. So if you put down something that's overcooked, under-seasoned, over-seasoned, you're saying that we don't really give a damn about what's going on here. This is an opportunity for you. Don't waste your time. Don't waste our time. Understood? OK, now, let's see some good dishes. So, no pressure on the next in line. I'm a bit of a mess. My name is Derek, and I'm in a death metal band. I make my living sitting in front of a computer all day building websites. A little piece of me dies when I think about that. So to pursue my passion of cooking, that's, it, that's sick. How are you? Good, Chef. How are you? Farrell indeed, thanks, buddy. What are you cooking? I have a homemade chorizo on a potato sopa with some fire-roasted salsa. So you made the sausage at home? No, no, I made it here. It's a blend of pork belly and pork rib meat. Do you have a passion for making sausage? Oh, everything I can do myself is what I do. Like, I make my own bread. You know, I haven't bought pasta in two years. What's in the bowl? Uh, this is fire-roasted salsa. Mm -hmm. I roasted uh, tomatoes and poblanos under the broiler. I threw them in the food processor with some lime. Now we are ready to taste. OK, brave move, homemade Teresa. I mean, very brave. Is that you at your best on a plate? Y yeah, it's, it's, I feel like it is. I, 
I'm just really thrilled that you guys are even just tasting this. Love the energy. You've got a big pair of to come in here and make a chorizo sausage in under 60 minutes. Did it work? Yes, it did. I'm in. Delicious. <laughs> Thank you, chef. I, I had no idea where you were going with that dish. It's not something that sounds particularly intriguing to me. When I tasted it, it was Amazing. Just frying the soap up. The fry technique on that was so perfect. It was crispy, it wasn't greasy, it was light, it wasn't damp. You nailed it. Really great top to bottom. Congratulations. I'm a big yes for you. Thank you, Chef. Graham? You're what this competition's all about. <laughs> Come here. Thank Pretty you. Good Thank job. you, Chef. Awesome. Good, good stuff. Work, good, good stuff. Thank you. For Mr. me, Ramsey, chef. Uh, one to watch. You are the one. seen a dish that looks like this, but it tastes amazing. This guy really knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> to cook for three culinary geniuses, that was pretty badass. Coming up, a lawyer pleads her case. If there is any chance for me to fight for this, I have to fight. It's not a court of law. Please. And the competition gets out of control. Pieces of Security. Well done. So far tonight, just three home cooks have been awarded an apron and taken their place in the next stage of the competition. Up next is Bob Rafferty from Massachusetts. Farmer Bob believes his organic ingredients will sow the seeds of Master Chef's success. What I love about farming is that I can take the pick of the crop, that if I want to make an eggplant parmesan, that I can go pick the perfect eggplant. You're looking at America's next master chef. How are you? Your first name is? My name is Bob. I'm from Lowell, Massachusetts. I'm an organic farmer. Arable farming? Vegetables, but I also do work with another poultry farmer in order to get the, the composted manure to stay organic on my farm. What are you cooking? What I'm doing is what I like to call a reverse surf and turf. So the protein is actually the tuna in this one, and then I have the coconut chicken medallions with the Chinese five spice. What happened to the pepper? Did someone slice it? It's like a crown. Uh, yes, I carved out the top of it to make a, a dipping cup out of it. Okay, creative, Bob. Wow. Mm. You talk passionately about organic farming, yet we have no ingredients from the farm, and you've got ahi tuna from the Pacific. Right. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I did not bring anything from my farm. There you are, gentlemen. Are we ready to taste? Be my guest. Right, the tuna. I want to slice through there. OK. And it's seared. Is it going to be pink, chilled, stone cold? What am I looking for in there? There should be some rareness in the middle. It is rare. <sighs> Bob. Bob, 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 Bob. All right, Bob. Joe, yes or no? Um, I don't think it's kind of at the level we're looking at, so I'm going to say no. Graham. I don't question your integrity, but I do question your cooking skills. I'm a no. There's no charm in your food. Farmer Bob, I'm sorry, EI, EI, no. I probably should have just stayed with New England style comfort cooking, which I didn't. I tried. I tried. But unlike Farmer Bob, not everyone can dish it out and take it. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Good. What are you cooking, big boy? Today we are going to be cooking something called redneck sushi. Redneck sushi? Redneck sushi, yeah. So it's a blend of sushi and <laughs> barbecue. First time I've ever heard of that. What's the secret of it? The barbecue sauce that I make is a white barbecue sauce. A white barbecue sauce? A white sauce. barbecue sauce. It's basically just a mayonnaise base. 
What is the actual meat? What cut? What animal? It's a chicken breast. Is it braised? Normally, what I do is I do a, uh, a beer butt chicken. I spice rub it, put the uh, beer inside of it, make sure it's really nice and moist. I've never had chicken in a sushi. It's ready for you gentlemen to eat. <coughs> can you call that sushi? Yeah, absolutely, I can call that sushi. It's, it's clearly a no, sorry. It, it works for me, so I think it's a yes. For me, it's a no. <laughs> Pieces of <laughs> Those guys are so full of they don't even know what the they're doing. That guy's gonna come back and kick your ass, man. Security. The next home cook has put everything on the line in an attempt to achieve her dream. My name is Esther. I live in LA, I'm 28 years old, and I'm an attorney. I was good at it, but I recently quit my law firm job so I could pursue food. So now my world is the culinary world. I feel like as much as it was a big risk for me, my husband has given me the opportunity to do this, so I want to do well for him. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring it like no one else has brought it. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to stomp on it. <laughs> I'm coming. Hi. How are you? Oh, thank you. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, right, what are you cooking? I am cooking a Korean spicy braised cod with daikon two ways. Great. And what's your uh, day job? What do you do for a living? I'm an attorney. OK. And um, actually, I was at a big law firm until last year when I quit my job because I realized that no matter how high I get as an attorney, it's not going to fulfill me. I'm a little bit puzzled the fact that you've given up a high-powered job. After a couple of years, I'm like, OK, what does my soul say? Your soul says something is wrong, and you have to find out what it is. And that's what it was. I have to go yeah. into business. My soul tells me you've got 15 seconds left <laughs> okay. to get that on a plate. Otherwise, we'll be tasting fresh air. Happy? Yes. Right, how do you rate your food out of 10? What would you give yourself marking? It would be a nine. Mm -hmm. A nine. The daikon's actually meant to be eaten with the rice. You asking me or telling me? I'm... Mm. Daikon, fine, pleasant. So and there's something missing does. there. In the bottom, there's supposed to be a pool of sauce that is yeah. hot. You forgot the sauce. That's what I plan to do, and I'll make smarter mistakes. All right. Uh, a little more acid would have given it a kick to really set off the richness of the fish. What do you think, Chef? For me, the sad news is it actually looks better than it tastes. In there, you might see something missing, but I hope you see something in me. You're not going to sit there and preach to me mm -hmm. that that is perfection. For me, it's a no. Oh. I, I can feel the determination in the room. This means so incredibly much to me. I believe that. I want to see more of what you can do, so I'm going to give you a yes. Joe, please. Is there anything I can say? I don't think you need to plead your case anymore. OK. It's not a court of law. Mm -hmm. We're looking for America's master chef. Hey, if there is any chance for me to fight for this, I have to fight. It's certainly not a restaurant quality dish. Joe, please, I Some would... mistakes in the execution. The whole thing is, is at, at the end of the day, is not that impressive. Please. For me, it's a no. 28-year-old Esther gave up her career as an attorney to pursue her love of cooking. I'm going to give you a yes. 
Could it be the biggest mistake of her life? If there is any chance for me to fight for this, I have to fight. Joke. At the end of the day, it's not that impressive. Wait. But you are impressive, and I'm going to say yes, because I think that I see something in you that I want to see more of. Don't let me down. Thank you. Oh. I'm, I'm grateful, but I have a lot more to do. I, I'm ready to fight. You're guilty. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Esther successfully pleaded for her apron. But can the next in line engineer his success with a very different approach? Alvin! I'm Alvin. I'm 28 years old from Houston, Texas. America's never seen a master chef like me. I've got over there a homemade immersion circulator. And what I'm doing with that is creating an egg with a uniform texture all the way through it. Molecular gastronomy is a fancy word for saying science in the kitchen. We take common foods and mix them with slightly uncommon ingredients. We can alter the textures, alter the format of food, and really create surprising elements to put on a plate. You're the best, Alan. <laughs> What is on that trolley? Well, I have a homemade immersion circulator here. It has held a water bath at 63.2 degrees Celsius, in which I've cooked an egg, which is really the star of my plate, Loco Moco, the Hawaiian classic. A braised beef short rib, short grain sticky rice in a wonton shell, and then top it off with the 63 degree sous vide egg. Is that it? This is it. So, wow. Cutting that egg, it should just Flow and melt. Knife in. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. It's pretty close. Short rib action. That egg kind of breaks into the rice. Yes. I wish I had two mouths to eat this. Thank you so much, chef. Graham, yes or no? I'm a yes. Thank you, chef. Joe, yes or no? Yes, definitely yes. You have right. three big yeses. Thank you, Congratulations. Chef. Oh, yeah! Get that on. Thank you so much. Well deserved. You are a freak genius. You can't be that creative and not work in the industry. Let me tell you that. So get out of here. Thank All you. Right. Thank well you done. So this apron means that I will be the next master chef. Game on. For the next two home cooks, Master Chef has become a family affair. You can put anyone here next to me, and I just can't really fathom the whole, that's my mom right there. I'm competing against my son, but I think I've had a couple of years on him. So I think he better watch out. I wish her the best of luck and that there'll be no hard feelings if she goes home early. Prepare to be taken down by your mama. Hello. Good afternoon. Howdy. First name is? Denise. Denise. And who are you with? My son, who's competing against me today. He's what? Oh, He's wow. competing against me. Family feud. Yes. So our big question is, are you better than your mother? Yes. Ooh. I know I can cook better. I just. You throw your mom under the bus pretty I'm easily. I'm not throwing under my mom under the bus. Is he competitive? Very. I'm not being mean to my mom, but... He's being honest. I'm being very honest. I mean, I love my son, but this is like one against one, so... Okay, let's put it this way. Who's the better cook? I am a better cook. I mean, she can pretend and 
have all these dreams of being better, but I know I can cook better. If you get through and he doesn't. So sad. Right. <laughs> Who does it mean most to? He's ambitious, a lot younger than you, clearly, but for you? I've, I've always been someone's daughter, someone's wife, someone's mom, someone's something. And I'd like to do this for myself. What are you cooking? I'm cooking uh, hot and spicy green beans with sausage. Great. What are you cooking? I made chicken paprikash sauteed spessel. Brilliant. Done? Yes. Thank you. All right. Green beans. Yes, hot and spicy green beans with sausage. Ready. So, last time I had this paprikash was in London, the most amazing right. Hungarian restaurant there. It's got that warmth that should deliver that sort of richness, that blend of the heat, so this meat should just fall off the bone without having to prise it off. I don't know, maybe not in my restaurant. OK. The secret of a good spatula is that lightness. Perfect. The flavor, there's some good spice. Uh, the sesame seeds, I think, add a nice toothsomeness. What, what kind of mushrooms are these? Those are uh, baby bellas. Rich. Tastes nice. Beans are slightly overcooked. Minced pork is tasty. Soy, ginger, garlic, sesame seeds, nice. But it's half a dish. Your biggest competitor in this competition is yourself for not letting go. The first mother and son to compete in MasterChef history are putting their food and their relationship on the line. Who's the better cook? I know I can cook better. I am a better cook. Now it's time to find out whether Denise's spicy green bean dish or Kyle's chicken paprikash is good enough to win an apron. Joe, yes or no? It's not a dish and it doesn't really say anything about her or the competition and it's just completely irrelevant. The sausage is delicious. I'm um, no. You're no. Graeme, yes or no? Just as a side dish versus everything that we've seen and all the competition that's here, I'm a no. And I'm saying that is not Master Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, yes or no, please? Call it chicken cacciatore, call it paprikash, whatever you want to call it. I think it's kind of fatty, lacking in acid, and a little bit pedestrian. I, I, I say no. I completely disagree. I think it's very rustic, and it has some soul behind it, and it's yummy. So I'm going to be a yes. For me, that's a ballsy dish right. to put forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not just in MasterChef, but to compete against your mother. Mm -hmm. For me, I want to see more. It's a yes. Congratulations. Thank you. If I was you, I'd keep this rolled up because I don't think your mum's going to be very happy. Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully, the next time I see my mom is when they open the doors at the finale. That's right. Put it on. Yeah. Next through those doors, a Midwestern truck driver is about to go down a very different road. My name is Tony. I'm a 51-year-old truck driver, and cooking is an addiction for me. Oh, wow, those are dry rubbed good. Around my town, I'm pretty much known as the barbecue guy. Oh, yeah, perfect. Being a chef has been my dream for some time. I've always wanted to go to a culinary arts program, but I've raised a family all my life. I worked in the steel industry for 20-some years. This is absolutely my time. It's taken quite a while, but everything I've done throughout the whole course of my life 
is leading up to what's happening right now. Hello, gentlemen. How, are you, How doing? are you? How are you doing? Wonderful, thank you. Good. Your first name is? My first name is Tony. Tony, good to see you, buddy. I see you're working very methodically and not scrambling, not panicking. When I'm in the kitchen is where I have my most confidence, and it actually is one of the things that I enjoy the most. What are you making for us today? I've got a pan-seared mahi-mahi over a bed of paella-style rice with wow. a mango salsa. Wow. Sounds intriguing. Gentlemen, I present you my dish. Grandma, off we go. All right. So with mahi, there's always a chance to overcook it, you know, because there's just not a lot of fat. Right. You know, so it should be nice, have some slight little opaqueness going through it. So let's kind of go right here. That looks pretty perfect. Good job. Thank you. You know, I think you could have gone a little more lime and a little bit of salt. I think that really would have brought it out. Thank you Thanks, very Tom. much. How you doing, Tony? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. Where do you go with this? Where, where does this take you? My vision is to own my own restaurant. I, I want to bring some culture food to my small town. It's a meat and potatoes community. The only fish that they experience in our town is fried fish at the Legion on Saturday night. Mm. That fish is cooked perfectly. Unfortunately, the rice should be 100 miles away from that fish. Damn. Uh, Joe, yes or no? I'm 100% uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Good dish. Congratulations. Thank you. Graham, yes or no? I second that notion, yes. Thank you. And for me, it's three big yeses. Congratulations. Well Good done. Job. job. Thank you. Put this on. I'm looking that, that, forward to see what else you got to bring us, bro. That's Thank good. you. Well done. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very All much. Right. said yes on the fish alone. Look at that. Delicious. Yep. My destiny is coming to fruition. It's happening. I made it. Yeah! Up next is the final home cook of the day. I purposely added that much spices. Too hot to handle. Breathe. Congratulations. As the sun sets on day two, a flurry of home cooks bag aprons. Almost done. But can the last contender finish the day on a high with a dash of Latin flair? Oh, I'm Alejandra. I live in Playa del Rey, California, and I'm an architect and an urban planner. So have a minute. Growing up in Venezuela, I was in the kitchen with my mom since I was a very young girl. Very excited. It's been a big part of my life. I definitely have what it takes to be the next master chef. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Good. And what are you cooking? I'm making a per well, my interpretation of a Peruvian dish called uh, camarones saltados, which is a shrimp sauteed. What's your full-time job? I'm an architect, I'm, so I'm college educated. I have a master's in urban planning. I actually lost my job at the beginning of 2009. 20 yeah. seconds left. OK. OK. Done. That's it? You happy with that? Hopefully, the flavor will show you my skill. OK. Right. You work in architecture. Well, not anymore. It's been two years of a lot of financial struggle, but I have $150,000 worth of student loans, but I didn't know the market would crash the way it did and that I would lose my job and not be able to produce and provide for myself. So being here means a lot to me. Breathe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have to stop. How do you cook the shrimp? I brined it. I marinated it quickly. Visually, the shrimps look overcooked, but you've been very smart by brining them. 
and they actually taste delicious. Thank you. Mm. To me, what really sets everything off is the onion. It really works with the sweetness of the shrimp and, you know, the acidity of the tomato. It's a really balanced dish. What do you think about the spice level on a dish like this? It's a bold dish, but I like bold flavors. I purposely added that much spices to bring that combination out. What's fascinating is how good you are, yet you're not even trained. It's like a missed opportunity. It kind of like tells your story on the plate. I think it's really one of the best things we've eaten so far. I think that the judiciousness of the spicing is really spot on. One yes. Graham, yes or no? Two yeses. That's all it takes. It's never too late. It's a definite three out of three. Well done. Congratulations. How you deserve it. And more importantly, it didn't cost 150 grand. Well done. Thank you. I'm living the dream right this moment. I left home to come here to do big things, and I'm now ready for the next step. She nailed it. Huh? She did nail it. Next time on MasterChef, the, the audition comes to a close as America's best home cooks fight for the final aprons. The pressure's on. Some hopes are dashed. You're lucky that you haven't killed somebody. For others, give that to your dad. Dreams become reality. That's why they came to this country was for us to pursue our dream. And a star is born. When you take the beautiful fish and you just sort of dip it in the egg. As the search for America's next master chef. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, That's fine. Continues.